Hey, so this is some work I did at IBM with some people there over the summer. And our alternate title is Cryptography for Hashtag Me Too. So what problem in particular are we looking at? Well, statistics show that most sexual assault is perpetrated by repeat offenders. So what happens when the victims of a given perpetrator can get together? They can corroborate their accusations, and they can try to bring their perpetrator to justice. This is what we want to try to achieve through a cryptographic protocol. What would our ideal functionality look like? Well, if we had a trusted third party, each victim could give their accusation to the trusted third party. The third party could match accusations, which named the same perpetrator. And it could alert the victims. It could send them to a lawyer. It could do all sorts of things. But the main point is it has to match the victims who have the same perpetrator. So of course, a natural question is, how do we remove the trusted third party? And before we look at our solution, we're going to look at some existing uh, tools that people use to report sexual assault. So the first solution, and this is something people use in the real world, uses no cryptography. This is a Google spreadsheet where people list perpetrators in each row. And so there's kind of limited security here. There's a bit of anonymity, because you can log out of your Google account. But other than that, there's not a whole lot going for it. More recently, we have this work called Callisto, where we uh, try to implement a function, where a group implements a functionality very similar to what I was describing. And they have a lot of features in their system. And they seem to do a good job protecting the anonymity of the accuser. Um, but one thing we should also look at is how it protects the uh, accused. So to go a little bit technical, in their system, when they have to match the name of a perpetrator, they do this by computing an OPRF, that's an oblivious pseudorandom function, on the perpetrator with a fixed key. So that gives this value we're calling pi. So the main point of this is that an OPRF is deterministic. So if you have two p's, you can compute their pi's and compare them to see if they're the same. Now, in some settings, this could also be viewed as a weakness. Imagine we compromise the database. Then it would be easy to see if a given person had ever been accused. You just compute their pi and check if it's in the database. We want a system that's kind of robust to attacks like this. So what are we looking for? Specifically, we want you to learn if someone's been accused only when you yourself submit an accusation. Now, we're also worried about the privacy of the accuser. So nothing should be revealed about a victim until their record is matched. Also, we need to make sure that each record actually has a real accuser attached to it. So how do we achieve this? Well, the first thing is we need a new private comparison protocol. And once we have that, we throw a couple other things together. We have group signatures, we have proofs of plain text knowledge, and we throw some threshold cryptography on top of all of that to kind of remove the need for central trust. So to give you a flavor of our protocol, I have a slide with some math on it. So the basic idea is to compare two perpetrator names. We compute additively homomorphic encryptions. We subtract them, and we multiply by a random value. What do we get when we decrypt that? Well, if they're the same, it should still be 0, even though we multiply it by a random value. And if it's not 0, then it should look kind of random. So that's kind of the basics of our scheme. So once we get that working and add the rest of our cryptography, we want something that can actually be a practical protocol. So we have a proof of concept implementation. And we're actually seeing some reasonable run times. And we hope this could actually be deployed. So what we need, we need people to act as uh, centers in this distributed threshold protocol. And once we had that, we hope that this could be a practical implementation. Thank you so much.